Oh, time to start. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've been sharing with you about what time of day is it, not so much what time is it on this day, but in the reference to the second coming of Christ, I, I just want to share again, I say good morning to you, God bless you. I'm glad that you're with us at Friends and Family Church this morning, and I pray that the Lord maybe answers a question that you might have had all week long or maybe the last year or month or whatever it may have been. I pray that the Lord answers a question for you today and that maybe something we will share, something in song or something in uh, might be a word of knowledge. Who knows that what the Lord will do today to bring about His Word. If you want to turn to the book of John, in the very first chapter, that's where I'll be this morning, and I'll open with a scripture but I want to say to you, I've been speaking to you about what time of day are we in? In the season of the second coming of Christ, or the end of time, or a new world government, and one world money, or whatever it may be, or doing away with cash and become a cashless society, whatever it is that you're focusing on. But let me share with you that in the last word, as well as the first word, God was there. His son was there. And he's all-knowing and all-seeing. But in John 1, the very first verse, it reads like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the... Oh, Hallelujah. And the life was the light of men. Do you know that light today? Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Lord, we know today that you have shared your beginning and what the end of time looks like. Just as I trust this word, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. Nothing was made without. I, I accept all of that. Just as I accept that in the end, that it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. And that men are going to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of, of God. And we know these things and we, we recognize the season in which we live. We, just, we want to do all we can, Lord, to be successful yes. at this moment in that harvest in the last days to accomplish your will. Let us focus on that. Let us forget the things left and right. Let us look up for our redemption is drawing nigh and know that you are leading us by your spirit, Lord, for your spirit will lead us into all truth, your word said. We thank you now, Lord, for our men and women in uniform and those that are first responders and those that are caregivers and all those that are out, Lord, that are, are not able to be in church for some working reason or health reason, whatever it may be, that you would be with them now in Jesus' name. Lord, I have a special prayer this morning, and some of these that are here may have a special prayer request today. And my sister-in-law, Doris, went in the emergency room last night, and I lift her up as we agree together in Jesus' name for Doris that you would help her and, and heal those lungs, that they would be renewed and refreshed. And we thank you now that you're going to touch her and help her, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, for the testimony that will come out of it. We ask, Lord, for those others that I'm not aware of that, that need you today and in their health and their situation, I, I lift them up to you that you would minister to them in Jesus' name. Those that are lonely or despondent and even our missionaries that may be thinking they're ready to throw the towel in because they just don't see the results that they're looking for. I pray, Lord, that you give them the ability and the, uh, the heart, Lord, to go one more day, one more minute, one more hour to step forward in the name of Jesus by faith. I thank you for that. 
I ask, Lord, that you would bless every church, not only in this community, but in the state, nation, and the world today, as it goes around the world, Lord, and the praises continue to be lifted up from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, that your name will be praised. Hallelujah. We thank you now for that. We ask you to be with us. We ask that we would be one voice, one instrument before you as we give glory and praise to you, those who are in the sanctuary and those that are at home. We ask your blessings on them as we give you all the praise and all the yes, glory yes. in Jesus' precious yes. name. Yes. Amen. amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Johnny? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. just want to share something with you this morning before we get started. Uh, we were blessed to be able to be a part. We'd go, go visit and see uh, a worship night over at South Bay Church. And they had 11 churches that came together. And out of those 11 churches, the 11 worship teams joined together to make up two worship teams. And so the first worship team did the first part of the, of the service. Then there was a break in the middle. And, this, and then the second worship team did the second part. And there was about 300 people or so there. And, and so it was, it was a tremendous night of worship. But uh, uh, Lance Carpenter shared uh, in the middle, he shared a word on worship. And one of the things he said, he said, I'm a plumber. And he said, as a plumber, I get called out to go and do all kinds of stuff. And he said, I've been called out to go find a necklace that was given to somebody uh, by their uh, parents. And their parents were gone, and, and it just meant so much to them. And they wanted, wanted me to try and see if I could retrieve that. And he said, and, and I'd start tearing things apart. And he said, in the middle of this muck and yuck and everything else, he would find that necklace, and you clean it up and hand it back to him. And, and uh, he said, you know, he said, the thing that was so awesome, he said, they were not concerned that that necklace was in the middle of a bunch of junk. And they don't even know, you know, you don't know how much, you know, how many years of junk was, that that was all wrapped up in and got so filthy and awful and dirty and everything else. I said, but they didn't care. It cleaned up, and it was theirs, and it was, a, it was a treasure to them. And he said, and that's the way our God is. He said he takes and reaches down there and pulls us out of that muck and cleans us all up, and, and he holds us. We're that treasure, and he holds us. And he said, yes, yes, this is my treasure. And he said, that's the same thing. And then we, we were blessed again. Yesterday we had a family get together. When my family gets together, we do two things. We eat and then we, we, we play music and worship the Lord. So that's what we did yesterday. And in the middle of all that, my nephew, Ray, he said, uh, you know, he said, I, I want to share a word with you. He said that our pastor shares almost every Sunday. He looks out and he says, you know what? He said, all of us are a Moses. We're all a Moses because we're all basket cases. You know, and, 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 and that's the truth. But, you know, the thing is, in all of that, in all of that, he loves us. Oh, he loves us. He really does. And today we're going to worship our God. And not because he loves us, but because of who he is. And in all that, he's going to pour out his love today, right here in this place. Right now, he's here and he's saying, okay, y'all. Whatever you want, I'm here. I'm here. Just recognize me and come on into my arms because I'm waiting for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He is jealous, jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are, Lord, and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Yes. 
Don't 
runs out on me And on and on and on and on it goes It overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One thing In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. And my debt is paid, there's nothing that can separate my heart from your Thank you for your love. Hallelujah. Sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. I'm thankful for the things you've done, my loving Savior. My precious Jesus, my heart is glad that you call me your own. There's no place I'd rather be in your arms of love, yes, Lord. In your arms of love, holding me still. Holding me in your arms of love. Yes, Lord. Be in your arms, Lord. Oh, it's so great, Lord. To hear your heartbeat. Sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. For, for the things you've done, your same Lord, loving Savior, my precious Jesus. My heart is glad that you call me your own. There's no place I'd rather be than in your arms.
We recognize your presence in this place today, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you call me son. You call me friend. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you sing over me. Lord God, and I thank you that you dance, Lord God, a song of celebration, Lord, all over me, Father. Oh, I thank you, Lord God, that I am your child. You are my father. Oh, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that empowers us. I thank you for the Son that shed his blood, Lord. Oh, I thank you for healing. I thank you. Lord, I thank you right now. You're working in the lives of people yes. here. Lord, yes. Lord right Hallelujah. now you're working in the lives of people that yes. are watching, Lord. But Lord God, it's because your presence is here, Lord God. And in your presence is fullness of joy. Lord God, in your presence, stuff happens, Father. Lord God, demons are afraid of your presence, Lord God. So Lord, we declare who you are today, that Jesus Christ is Lord, Father. Oh, Lord, we worship you. We give you glory because of who you are. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're in
part of the song that says it says you asked your son to carry this and what came right to my mind right away was that picture right there look up there he asked his son to do that you see that cross on his shoulder up there that's my sin that's my sin huh it's your sin. It's my sin. sin. It's my sin. But that's right. But when I look at it, I say, Lord, I know, I know I put a lot of weight on that cross. But he carried it. He carried it. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus. We thank it started we thank in Gethsemane. He prayed because he knew how heavy the sin cross was, not the wooden one. He said, Father, if this cup, and he talked about in that cup, as you were saying, on that cross, yes, was your sin, but in that cup at that moment was your sin and mine. That was, no man could drink that cup. 
that started in Gethsemane. That's why his sweat became his great drops of blood. And in that cup was all the darkness that we are. And he said, I'm sufficient. The Bible says he's the perfect sacrifice. No other could have been sacrificed for our sin but him because the blood that he carried was that of the Father, his Father, Holy God. Hallelujah. I didn't want to take away from the cross. The cross was, that was nailed. All of it was nailed there. But it started in Gethsemane with the cup. He said, if this could pass from me. But then he went on to say, can we say what he did? Not my will, but thine be done. No matter what you're carrying, what your cross may be, whatever your burden may be today, not my will, but thine be Hallelujah. done. Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For every person, man, woman, boy, girl, young, old, all, all nationalities, Lord, every rest, race, every tongue, every nation to bow before you. Thank you for taking my place. Johnny, sing that again. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We love you, Lord. Tell the Lord this morning. We worship you. In spirit and in truth. Your son, you ask your son to carry this the heavy cross. Oh, our weight of sin. minister to you today. Give him everything that you are. Everything that you have a question about, present it to him. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to tell him, I love you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. You're so good to us, Lord. Praise His name. Praise His name. Thank you all so much this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise. You, you, you can turn me down.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. Precious Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Lord. Just keep worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, precious Lord. Precious Lord. Precious Lord. Precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise His name. Praise His name. There's many that need a touch today. But you know, the greatest touch that we will ever receive, we pray for one another for strength to get through an event. We pray for one another to be healed and to be brought through an affliction. And all those things. But the greatest thing that will ever be delivered from is sin. If you die in your sin, and you didn't allow Jesus to put it in the cup, it was already there, and He's just waiting on you to accept it. He didn't leave somebody's sin out. He carried the weight of sin of the world on the cross. And in Gethsemane, He said, let this cup pass from me. It was not a natural cup that he was talking about, but it was all the burden and the weight of that. And yours was there. Mine was there. And even those who won't accept Christ, theirs was there also. So if you're listening today here in the sanctuary or at home, know that your sin was a part of that weight, that darkness, that burden. He didn't leave yours out. He's waiting on you, and then he'll put it back in, and then he'll review it. It, You don't have to do it like the government. They don't don't have to review your your paperwork. All you have to do is just accept it because he's already made a way of salvation. Today I'd like to share with you about the horn of salvation. All of that sin that we... We were talking about all of that that we were. And you say, well, I never did do this. I never did do that. I'm not guilty of this or that. The Bible said if if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. If you've thought it, you've already done it. And so you don't have any righteousness of your own except that that you want to try to convince yourself of. But God is saying that you need Him because He sent His Son to carry that burden and He's waiting on you. If you've never received that and accepted that, He's here today. Today is the day for your salvation. And in that horn of salvation, it's mentioned many times in the Scripture, think about the reference and times that it's used and how it's uh, spoken of. The horn of salvation is mentioned many times in the Bible But what does it actually mean? What is it saying? What is it? How does it apply to your life? You go, I read it. I have read it. A horn of salvation. I say it like that. Then when I begin to think about what was in it, the Old Testament, the word horn signifies many things. Of course, one usage of the horn was to refer to a pointed bony structure coming out of an animal's head. And that may be where your thoughts start and stop. But what does it actually mean? Animals' horns were used for fighting. They were used for protection and securing dominance. Think about a horn of salvation and war, not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Again, that was not a literal cup that Jesus had, and he put all of the unrighteousness of the world in it. It was symbolic of what he was about to do within himself. He would would be the vessel and he would carry the burden of all sin. And through him there is a horn of salvation 
So it becomes a symbol. Strength, power, victory. Structures are mentioned uh, as a horn. It's literally a symbol representing the potence and power. The potency of that and how strong it is, it is mighty for tearing down strongholds. So what do you know of the horn of salvation that came to you? I'm going to pause in that thought for just a minute. I'm going to carry you to some scripture this morning, if I might. As we open the service today, and we started out with John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. All things that were made were by Him and through Him. Nothing was made without Him. That was made. And all of that is there. And it's for you. And as I said, there was not an incompleteness when Christ carried that cup, spoke to His Father about it, and said, if it's possible, let it pass from me. Because He knew the burden, the weight, the, what it would do to Him as a, as, a, as a man. He was a man as you and I are. But yet when he was resurrected, he showed himself in, in to be a complete uh, co connection and with one, with God. He didn't remain in the grave like those that have gone on before. He has risen. He was all complete man, but he was all complete God. And he proved that in the resurrection and that horn of his salvation that he brought about is rich and full. And it sets you and I completely free. Not partially it's like that cup again. All the weight of sin and darkness was there. He doesn't wait for you to come by and he says, oh, let me turn a few pages here. Let me see what all you've done and uh, how much do you owe me? Uh, and he doesn't do any of that. It was paid in full originally. Hallelujah. And he doesn't have to go back and review anything. He carried the sin, the weight of the world. And because of that salvation and that horn and the structure of that, that He made a way for you where there was none. That's right. All there was was a symbolism. I'd like to take you to Isaiah, if I might. As I go to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, <clears throat> I want you to realize that it's, it's a prophecy. Uh, there's, you know, many prophecies throughout the Bible. And again, if your Bible is one that's of a study-type Bible, it may have a star by the uh, third verse, 40th chapter. And that, that's letting you know that that was a prophecy. And then it goes on to be fulfilled later on. You'll see that, you know, you're looking for a, a darkened end star by that verse. That means that it was completed. So usually if you have a study Bible, it's got a reference uh, scriptures in the middle of the page like mine would be that I, I love using. Because if I read the third verse, I can go to the center part of my, my scriptures as I teach you today how to study from your Bible. Or what Bible should I even buy? Well, as I go through and I read Isaiah 40 and the third verse, I go to the center and, I, and it gives me a whole reference of scriptures that goes along with that. And so I don't have to, you know, go through and say, well, take the word and study it and go to the Strong's Concordance. I can actually use my reference Bible as I teach you today how to use your Bible and let it direct you. So we're going to leave from there in just a moment. Stay there, 40th chapter, Isaiah. And when we leave there, we're going to John 1. That's where I started out in Scripture this morning and a little, little later verse in that. So we're going to start out with Isaiah, and we're going to read verses 3 through 5. In this prophecy, it's speaking of someone. As soon as I read the words, you may have already read the uh, third verse. You may recognize who it's speaking about, but at that time, Isaiah didn't know anything about future disciples. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't uh, speak, but it says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, what does it take to make a highway? What about a spiritual highway? How do you make one? How do you create one? What does it look like? What tools do you need? And as a pastor today, I hope I can equip you that you can start building a highway, not just a path, hallelujah, but a thoroughfare going into the things of God to be able to get His resources and bring them out and put them into place to build a highway and a path of salvation that you are a part of, that God is wanting to use you for. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight 
in the desert, a highway for our God. Hallelujah. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it all together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Maybe you can even put the word Selah right there. Not to add to, complete that. Hallelujah. Let me take you now in the beginning of that, in the third verse, it said, The voice of one crying in a wilderness. Go to uh, John, if you would, the book of John. Not first or second John now. Those of you that aren't studied, you might be over and ask, Well, I don't see what he's looking at. And find out that you're in first John or second John. But it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. As I give you a little more instruction about Scripture. And if you go down to the 11th verse, you see that there's a, a black star, if you have a study type Bible, and it's blackened in. That is the completion of the prophecy out of Isaiah 40 in the third verse. So if you go down to the 11th verse, let me share with you just for a moment there. Let me read verses. Uh, let me start, let me read verse, in, in 11, I'm sorry, in John 1. Verse 11, let me start there, and I'm going to read through 27. He said, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Now we're talking about Christ and the reference of the forerunner. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Your sins are forgiven. You have that horn of salvation. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God Himself. Hallelujah, glory to His name, that He is setting up something mighty and you can be part of. And the, world became, and, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Hallelujah, as we sang about this morning. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Is that who you are today? John bore witness. Here we go now, telling you what he just, John is telling you about these things. John the Baptist, witness of him. And he cried out, saying, This was he who I am, who, whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Back in John 1, in the beginning, the Word was God. He's talking about that, not only the uh, reference to Isaiah 40 third, in the third verse. And of His fullness we have all received. What did you receive? Grace for grace. Say it with me. I received grace for grace. You receive the grace of God because He is a God of grace. Hallelujah. It goes twice right there. Verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Can you stop and think there for a minute? In the Old Testament, grace and truth was not on them, but the earth would open up and swallow them up, and they were under the wrath of God. Anymore, the reason that it doesn't happen like that and that those things aren't taking place is because that now we have Christ as, a, as an, an intermediate person and He's there and the Holy Spirit is here and it's speaking to us and we have an intercession with God through His Son and that now when He looks at God, looks at you, He doesn't condemn you and open the earth and swallow you up because of your evil ways, but He shows you grace, hallelujah, and truth because of the coming of Christ Jesus. Do you know Him today in that way? Yes. Is it a ritual with you and your church? You sing a certain song or you know the old songs and, and not willing to, to inter, uh, step into the presence of God and sing a new song yes. and sing a, sing a new verse unto Him that He would lay upon your heart. You say, well, I can't sing very well. The Lord didn't ask you if you could sing very well. He said, sing a new song just as David now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests, think about what's happening here. I'm listening to some of the government things that are going on, and most of the time it was focused on the Catholic Church. But they were sending people into their church services and things, and it's documented and proved, 
and that they were focusing on trying to catch them in some things that they could do. It didn't start with this uh, regime of, of leaders we have now. It started a long time ago. Right. Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews, listen now, sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? I like this. You think about yourself, and generally when somebody says, Well, who are you? You're talking with a, an authority and about this subject. Or who, what gives you the right to... And he could have said, oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I guess I was speaking out of turn. That's not what John did. John had the holy boldness of Jesus even before the Holy Spirit got here. But he was filled with the Holy Spirit in Elizabeth's uh, bosom that he was there with her. And that the Lord filled. He leaped within his, his mother's womb when he met Mary. And when uh, uh, Elizabeth and Mary came together. And this is, this is why I'm preaching. This. Christmas is not too far away in the birth of Christ. But in the presence of what God did and what was going on even at this moment. That John the Baptist had been born. And that Christ had been born and they're both mature men now but at the time of the presence of even the Holy Spirit was ministering in the womb of those and you say why should we not abort children because the Holy Spirit can fill them even before they see the, uh, the, the light of day or being birthed and so why should we do that because the heart has began it has started beating if, if at the end of our life the doctors say there's no heartbeat no function of brain but yet in a child that's unborn, there's a heartbeat and function of brain. They are alive. It's not a complicated subject in this world. I know that many have gone that way and have listened to those that would, would share with them. It's not, it's not a child. It's not a person. But I say to you today that God was in the beginning. And He's, he's within those that are being born today and those that aren't being born. Hallelujah. Verse 19. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He didn't become timid is the point I wanted to make when I, I went sidetracked there. It says, He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. Think about it. I am not the Christ. But he didn't do it. Oh, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> I just can't see John doing that. He said, I'm not the Christ. But he had something that he was looking forward to saying right behind that. Do you have that message? You, do you say, well, who do you think you are? And you say, oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be timid in Jesus. Hallelujah. He, Jesus has no secret agents. Hallelujah. Even in the time now with, with John the Baptist coming on the scene. It says, he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they ask him, well, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. I think he was having fun right about then because he knew the joy and what he was about to share with them to break their world and start shaking a denominational, a religion, a time, a place of people that had been that had come complacent within understanding the prophecies out of Isaiah coming into what's happening. And this was a revelation, and it was in the 11th verse of that first chapter of John that it began to take place, that that prophecy was fulfilled. And he was excited because he knew he was part of it. Do you know you're part of the end time and the, and the coming of Christ? And that day is very soon. Do you know that today? Let me tell the Facebook page and those that are would listen later on YouTube. Let me tell the world today that our Lord Savior is ready to redeem you and your sins were on that cross and in that cup. But he walked through that path and he did it for you. I've heard some preachers say and he would have done it if you were the only one. Because he would leave the 99 and go after the one. He would have done that just for you. How important are you to the God of the universe? I am not the Christ, verse 21. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. <laughs> I want to read it in the way that I feel it today, if y'all would let me. I think he was having a wonderful time right there getting ready to share the message of the good news. He was not timid or bashful. Verse 22, then they said to him, who are you? 
that we may give an answer to those who sent us. It's happening that there's others being sent even in this day to upset the light of the world, which is Christ Jesus. That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? I mean, you must think I've had people ask me before, and I've said several times, especially in some critical situations. And, uh, and I had to pick my words because I knew that the S13 on the hands of the other two guys was, was you had to be careful what you said. But I'm saying to you today, just as I said to those men, who do you think you are asking us to do something? I said, that's the great part. I'm nobody. <laughs> but let me tell you about somebody who is somebody. Let me tell you about the one that can make a difference. Let me tell you about the one that can set you free. And so that's what's happening here. Just as Paul told him in the New Testament, you can go on to read it. And it says, and he was there with the Greeks and it said, and to the unknown God, they had it right there. And he saw that and I'm sure that he was waiting for the punchline, Johnny. He, he was saying, let me tell you about your unknown God. And he was waiting and excited, not that he was a great person, not that he was anybody, but in his heart was something that God was going to say to you and I even today, just as he did with John. Verse 22 again. And they said to him, to him, Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? And he did it again. He said, I am. Am what? <laughs> Our children would answer us that way. We would, we would get frustrated probably. And what he said, I am, he said, I am. And then he paused. It looks like the way it was written and the way that I feel it in my spirit today. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm sure he caught all of their attention. I don't think you could have uh, dropped a little pebble of a stone and it, it would be heard right about them because it was so silent. They didn't want to miss anything that uh, E.F. Hutton, I meant John, was about to say. <laughs> there was an old commercial years ago when E.F. Hutton starts to speak. Everybody did that with their ear. I believe they were all wanting to hear, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Your message and mine is that simple. You're not anybody, but in Him, you're everything. Johnny just, just shared with us the story about his... Uh, the, about the plumber and, and that he would go after those things. The Bible uses another st story it talks about that a man would sell everything, give everything he has to go buy a field, but within it there's a treasure, and that's what God did for you. You're the field, and he saw a treasure in you that he would lay down his life and give everything even for you. That's how much he thought of you. That's how much he loved you. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. That's a message that we all can share. As the prophet Isaiah said, referring back to what I shared with you in the book of Isaiah, 40th chapter, 3rd verse, I just shared that with you. He says, as the prophet Isaiah said. This is the fulfilling of that prophecy out of the book of Isaiah. Isn't that awesome? Verse 24 now, those who were sent were from the Pharisees. That gives you an idea who they were. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah or the prophet? Why do you do that? What gives you the authority? John answered them, saying, I baptize them with water. But there stands one among you whom you do not know, it is he who is coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandals, sandal straps I am not worthy to lose. What a compliment. What a compliment. Let that kind of settle in for just a moment. We know that in Luke, the first chapter, you can turn there if you want to. I'll just share some scripture there in just a moment. But in Luke, the first chapter and verse 36, it was an angel talking to Mary. 
And it's interesting that one of the, talking about the horn of salvation, and there's others that are talking about the horn of David, the lineage, the following through, the connections, and that Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist, which was a cousin <laughs> to Mary. And so Mary went to her, not knowing that, she, uh, that Elizabeth was expecting and all the story that took place there. It says in Luke uh, 136, and it's speaking about Zacharias and what we should do and why we should do it and what the Lord says, even why they should call his name John. There's a whole story there about that. Maybe I'll share some of that. I'm not sure. See how the time goes. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age. Wait a minute. They didn't have a sonogram back then. The angel just did what? Angel must have had a sonogram going on somewhere. Well, something was happening. They didn't know till they were born. I know some people today that won't go get a sonogram because they want to be surprised as to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, whether it's a boy or a girl that's being born. And they, and they will wait to let it be a surprise. It used to be a surprise every time because they didn't know. But in this case, now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son. So there was, a, there was a, a prophecy right there, a message that came forth from that angel. And it was in what? In her old age. Wait a minute, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah had a baby in her old age, and, and this is happening again. And God can, we sang it, what, last week or week before, that my God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything. He made the earth in all its fullness and all that time will ever bring. My God can do anything. Hallelujah. And who are you? <laughs> Basically, you're like the moon. You're nobody. Without the sun, the moon has no light. That that we receive that affects the earth so much is the reflection of the sun off of the moon, and it causes the tides to go as much as 20 feet in some of the Alaskan and the North Seas. 20 feet change because the moon that has no power, no authority, no light of its own, and we are not moonies though, you and I. <laughs> that was a, a religion of faith years ago. Don't see much of them anymore. Something called Hare Krishna. But I say to you today that you're a reflection of the light. You have no light of your own. In you is nothing good. So when they ask, who are you? <laughs> you, you can basically say, I'm nobody, but look out. I'm, I'm a part of the world's change because of the light that reflects out of me onto you today has the ability to change you into His likeness and His image and an eternal life can be yours and your sins are not only in that cup like everybody else's, but now you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You're set free. You're ready to move forward. Hallelujah. With what God has done for you. You're not anemic in any way, take your rightful place. You might just say simply, I am. One of the things I used to love to do on the job, I worked in construction and, and uh, millwright type work and such and worked with some rough people and such as that. And, and sometimes that I, it didn't take me long when I got into some of those places, even the military, I began to learn some of that and began to put things two and two together. And somebody would, you know, they would, didn't take them long. You didn't uh, cuss and, well, what'd you do last weekend? Oh, I, I went to church or, church or we had a youth group gathering or something and we went to a praise and worship or a rally or something. And, and they say, well, oh, okay. And they say, well, what faith are you? Why did they ask me that? Who are you? Just like they asked why did they ask me, who are you? Because they were the men on the construction jobs and they didn't even realize it, but they had learned. If you say, oh, I'm Catholic, I'm Episcopal, I'm Pentecostal, I'm Assembly of God, I'm First Baptist, I'm Southern Baptist. Soon as you told them that answer, Soon as you did that, they put you in a basket and they knew how to talk and be around you after that. They already know about the presence of the Lord. And if you'll think back in those times to somebody, say, well, what church do you go to? They don't even know it, but the reason they ask you is so they could know what basket to put you in. God doesn't have a basket. <laughs> 
Oh, hallelujah. When they would ask me, say, well, what, what church are you associated with? I said, his church. Well, who are you? I am. And kind of like what John the Baptist was doing, it didn't talk about a, a group or a faith or a religion or a denomination. None of that. We are the sons and daughters, it did say, of the Most High. And we have an inheritance, not as a stepchild, but as a son or daughter in the kingdom of God with the full inheritance with Christ Jesus equal with Him. And the Bible is giving you that in word as a promise. And in everybody here today, you go to the store, everywhere you go, you can go to uh, uh, Home Depot or wherever. Do you want to take the insurance policy out on it? You want to buy some insurance? Every one of us are looking for some assurance within our, our life and the promises and the Lord says that He's given us a guarantee that these things are, are through Him and by Him. And at the very beginning, in the beginning was, was the Word, and the Word was with God. And, and it, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Hallelujah. Jesus being the Word. Do you have the Word today? I am. And when I would tell them, I wouldn't tell them a denomination. It would frustrate them. I am. <laughs> you am what? <laughs> As my children would say. <laughs> my, my daughter one time, just a quick story comes up, my younger daughter and, and uh, Amy and, and when she was little and <laughs> she was talking with her grandfather and I happened to be within earshot of it and I was listening to the conversation and he was telling her about two different things and, 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 and she... <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and as, he, as she was coming, trying to tell him about that, explaining it, and, and he looked at her and he said, well, honey, witching. And my daughter looked at him and she stood there. She started explaining it again. And his words were, well, witching. She says, Grandpa, I don't rightly know what witching is. But she's, she's trying to understand today the church, even in the elementary, we're trying to understand the fullness of God. But I would ask you today, I don't mean this disrespectfully. I'd say it to you with a, with a blessing that God would encourage you to read the Word. But what I'm reading today is more Scripture than you'll put in your own path this week and coming up ahead of you or maybe even the next month for some people. Get into the Word. Find out who you are. Know the ability of God. Know the authority you have. And when they ask you, you don't say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, I didn't mean to say that like I knew something or I, I had an authority. <laughs> don't be timid in Jesus. Don't be arrogant either. John said, I am. And then, of course, it, that he went on in verse uh, 24. Now those that were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, when or why do you baptize? And he gave them a reason. He wasn't worthy to do anything, but there was one coming after him that not only had the ability to baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with something greater than that, something you've never known before, something that I was filled with in the, in the very birth canal of my mother and that I was set free even then and I was here for a purpose and I'm fulfilling my purpose. I ask you today, do you know what your purpose is? Do you know how to answer the questions? Well, who are you? Do you love people enough to change their direction, their path from that of sin? Luke 1, 36. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son. I thought that was awesome that they didn't have the electronic equipment back then. And it was in her old age. <clears throat> and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. In your spirit, you may feel like, I just don't know who I am in Christ Jesus. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in Christ Jesus. Anybody remember the meetings years ago from the Ladies of Glow? And, and that was something like the uh, uh, Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship where there was the Ladies of Women's of Glow and uh, there was a program and such as that. And the men could come to the main meetings. They had their ladies' meetings, but when they would have a guest speaker come in, they, they would allow you know the men to come with their wives, and I would go. And I remember this lady, I don't even remember what her name was or anything, and it was really interesting that she simplified the gospel 
in what my future was and what your future is and what hers was and what the Spirit said to her. She said, you know, the great thing about serving Jesus is I don't have to do anything except listen to Him. As He speaks to me, I get the opportunity to speak to you. Jesus said that I don't speak anything that the Father didn't first say to me. And it said it into the Spirit of Christ. And she says, and that's what makes it so easy. She said, and she, she was talking, she said, it's like having one of those earpieces in your ear, like some of the, uh, the uh, Secret Service and the FBI, they'll have those earpieces in, and you see it a lot on TV now. They have these little implants in there, and they can actually, and they can hear what's going on, and they can have a conversation with someone in an office distant way. And she said, it's kind of like that. And she says, and that that I say to you, I don't have to think about it. I just have to pause for just a minute. I have to focus on Him. And then He speaks to my heart. Most of us become nervous. And I can't stand up and speak. And you start telling yourself all the things you can't do. Moses did the same thing before Christ or before God. He says, I have, I, 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 I have a speech impediment. <laughs> And Moses is trying to convince God, you got the wrong guy. Moses, listen to me. I'm going to give you a spokesman. His brother's name was Aaron. I'm going to give you Aaron as a spokesman. You don't have a problem. But I can't lead these people out. He says, I have no power, no, no ability. And I'm saying to you today that many of the things that we've learned in church and many of the things that mainline denominational churches do that I, I really disagree with some of those things. I love those people dearly. I'm so thankful that those denominations have sent people into the mission fields and souls have been saved and lives are changed. But does it mean that those denominational mainlines are perfect? Absolutely not. Even though I disagree with them about something. Somebody asked me one time in a church situation, something came up. It dealt with me and the pastor. They said, what are you going to do? I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, this is kind of like direct. It was, it's kind of an attack. What are you going to do? I said, well, I, he doesn't affect what God told me to do. I said, if I have to take my guitar and sit at the beach and put out a towel and let my kids play and have a church, uh, a little Sunday school and a little praise and worship. I said, I'm not going to let anyone deflect me from what God called me to do. It may be in a different location, may have a different time schedule to it, but I'm not set in those things. I'm not conformed to the things of the world. I can make a difference and change. I'm going to continue with what God told me to do, even in the circumstances that I'm in. Whatever that circumstance, whatever the place, the geographical location, whatever it is, I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. And I said, and it wound up later on that and I did exactly that. I went to Crystal Springs up above around Hillsborough State Park on 301, put a blanket down. We had 30 people. And you just gather around wearing swim trunks and T-shirts. And, you know, maybe, maybe uh, munching on potato chips while we were having church. But we were outside. It didn't matter. I know we try to keep the sanctuary and try to keep it uh, without the insects and the bugs because of food and, and all those things. But I'm telling you what, it may be a different setting, but God's not under the uh, roof of this building because we did something special. It's because He did something special in loving you and I that He shows up. Right. Hallelujah. And He loves you, and He brought to you grace, His grace, and He sets in your heart His truth. Praise His name. So these things were going on. Angels were making all kind of statements about babies that were unborn, and there were going to be boys, and, and what was going to happen, and what their things were going to do. Go a little bit further, first chapter of Luke still. I'll read for you just a little bit there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I spoke to you about John the Baptist, that it was announced 
The angel had told Elizabeth and, and Mary knew about it and the whole story and Zacharias and what happened with him. Did you know that Zacharias lost his voice because he was, he was you know, like, like, this can't be. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about all this. I'm old. My wife is old. Uh, you got the wrong guy, like Moses, you know, you got the wrong guy. And when you talk to the Lord, you say, Lord, I know all these things and I see what is happening with many, but I can't do all of that. And the Lord says, yes, you can. You don't, you're not going to be timid when you use, because I'm going to, you're going to stop asking me what to do and I'm going to speak through that Holy Spirit earpiece and I'm going to share with you what to say and your boldness and your smile and your love and your compassion is going to melt the darkness and the sin within those around you and you're going to make a difference. I remember the times in my life as a young man that I would say, well, I want to get them to church. I'm just a young teenager, you know, like 13, 14. I'd love to get them to church. They'd make a great Christian and I'd love for, you know, to see a change in their life. They've got so many things that are upside down and and we can, I can remember thinking like that, thinking that I needed to get them to church. That, uh, Michelle, that I would be able, they would something be said there that I was unable to do. I didn't realize that sometimes the greatest thing that you'll ever do is serve God at the age, at the time, wherever you are, young and old alike. Just as I mentioned to you last week as I prayed for Richard, Richard wanted me to give you the praise report, and I did. Some of you weren't here last week, and, but as I prayed for Richard there in the restaurant, and after I finished praying, the lady on the booth behind us, and I, did, I was trying to keep my old booming voice down and trying to do what I could and trying to be soft and not disrupt uh, uh, Kim and, and Ashley were there at the table, and I was trying not to disrupt you know, them. They were talking a little bit, and, I'm trying to, and so I'm praying on the phone. And I thought I was trying to be discreet in that that I was doing, but I wasn't going to wait till later because Joanne said they put Richard in an ambulance. They put him in an ambulance, and he went to the hospital, and she said he can't see out of his left eye. It just goes and comes, and, and they're very concerned. And she said, would you pray for him? I said, yes, I will right now. So we prayed then sitting in the booth. But the lady behind us in the booth I didn't know that I, I was loud enough for them to hear. Most people hear a lot better than I do. <laughs> but as she came around, she says, about 10 minutes after that, I guess she had to build up her courage. And she came over and she said, I want to tell you how great it was that you prayed for your friend. I believe the Lord answered that prayer. And then that was prophetic that she said that. Because now Richard called me last week, and I, week, uh, last Sunday I mentioned it, that Richard wanted me to tell you that he's healed. He said, I, I haven't had any more problems with it since y'all prayed. Praise God. praise God. He says the doctors still aren't sure. Yes, give God praise. Hallelujah. It's all about Him. All we are is reflecting the light of the sun, the S-O-N. I'm reflecting His light. I don't have any of my own. In me is nothing but darkness. The Bible tells us there's nothing good within us. Nothing but darkness. So if there's anything comes out of you that's good, it's the light that's within you that you're reflecting because of God. As you get, make the opportunity, okay, Lord, I'm listening to this person and I don't have a clue what to say. As the pastor, you're not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to have an answer. You're supposed to, Moses, lead the people. And they look to you sometimes, put you on a pedestal. And sometimes you say, you know, I, I don't have a clue. And many times when I, we, Kim and I went to purchase something or whatever, and, and, I, and I would tell the person, you know, I said, well, I, I really think what you've got is a really nice automobile or a really nice vacuum cleaner. Years ago, they used to come to the house. Whatever it may have been. But I said, well, I'm not going to do that today. I need to go home and think about this and pray about it. Well, this deal may not be there tomorrow. I said, that's okay. God will work out another one. <laughs> and it just takes all the, all the pressure out of their conversation. Well, I may lose it. I may not get that car. I may not get that item, whatever, but let it go. It, it's just, it, it, none of it's that important. What's important is, is that you ask God, seek His face, seek first the kingdom of God. I mentioned last week in His righteousness, and then He can add all things unto you. Verse 59, Luke 1. And Mary <clears throat> remained with her about three months, and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth full time, 
a full time came for her to be delivered. And she brought forth a son. Wow, that's what the angel said. What if it had been a girl? They would have said, There's no, this story's all messed up. It's not going to be true. But it was just as the angel said. Verse 58, when her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great a mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. The Lord working through you. I'm going to share with you a secret. The world listens to you and your words of Christianity and your encouragement, and they're looking for somebody to win and succeed. But they don't believe that it can be you. And so those that begin to rejoice with the message and the word that came, that's what happens when that that you speak and you're saying, Oh, Lord, if that don't happen, I'm going to be in big trouble with my friends and my neighbors. And so you become fearful. Do not fear. The Lord has given you a sound mind and power and love. Walk in that. Verse 59. So it was on earth on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child that they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, Don't argue with a woman. <laughs> Let me pause right there. Don't argue with a woman. The Lord's already spoken to her, spoken to Zacharias. And in verse 60, it says, his mother, it says, uh, uh, let me go back to 59, the latter part of that, <clears throat> that his name would be called after his father, Zacharias. And she didn't hesitate. She said, his mother answered and said, no. There's a comma, or actually a colon, semicolon there right behind that. It says, he shall be called John. And they all, like, What? That's what the world's going to do when you tell them that Jesus is their answer to their problem. They're going to say, what? He shall be called John, verse 61. But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by that name. So they made signs to his father what, would he, what he would have, have him called. In verse 63, he asked for a writing tablet. And he wrote, saying, the reason he wrote is because he had become mute, because he was not following what God had said, and that he went into the temple, and, and when he came out, he couldn't speak. And he was, that was his time to, to be there, to bring sacrifice, and to bring that prayer and that incense into the, the Holy of Holies. And when he went in, when he came out, he couldn't talk, and it made them all afraid. So listen careful. This is, the, this is the retraction of that. And what brought him out of that was this, verse 63. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, His name is John. And he, and he looked at them and I'm sure he was, he was doing it like this. And what's interesting right behind that, when he professed what God said to do, victory began to flow in his situation and it says that his name would be John. So they all marveled, and immediately his mouth was open. It didn't have to wait a little while. It didn't have to heal up. It didn't have to get better. But God loosed it right then. Just to say, well, I've seen miracles that were progressive. I've seen some that were immediate, that I know that that person was healed, that they were set free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Immediately his mouth was open, and his tongue loosed, and he spake. And what did he speak? Praising God, hallelujah. Just like David, when his son that he had birthed and, uh, through the wrongdoings and the thing, King David had went through that and his child was very sick and he, he petitioned heaven over and over and over, cried out to God, God, don't take my son, don't take my son. But he knew he had sinned. He knew that things had happened that were wrong and his son did pass away. You say, well, why do bad things happen to me and, and people that I know? And I'm telling you, it didn't start with you. It started a long time ago when man walked away from God. When you let the Lord work through you and He begins to settle the issues of your life and you can reflect the light of who He is into the world around you, you'll find it a whole different place. His tongue was loosed and He spake and He praised God. It said after David's son died, it says He went in after He was told that he hadn't eaten in a long time. King David hadn't eaten. He was petitioning God, seeking, fasting, doing everything he could. It said, but when they told him that his son had passed, he was gone. 
Sometimes we walk in those times of loneliness and it seems like, why did this happen to that one or this one or someone I cared so much about? And David, it says, after that happened, it said he rose, he went and washed his face, and then he went and worshiped. Here's an example. Soon as his tongue was loose and he came out of that time of lack of faith into his name shall be John, that he would begin praising God. What is the first thing you do when you have a problem? Remember years ago, I told you the story before about how I broke my, my index finger on my right hand and I knew it was broke. And I just put it over the top of my head and I was walking around out in the yard down at our house down here. I'm saying, Jesus, 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 it hurts. But I knew the world couldn't help me. And I knew that it was probably going to hurt for a while. But I just kept asking Jesus, you, you see what my foolishness just did? I got it between a trailer hitch ball and a trailer that rolled forward. And, and, and it didn't feel good at all. What there was a... a my dog at the time, we had a blue healer. And what was, I had this up on my, I had my eyes closed. Just wanted it to trip over something and fall down. But I had my finger way up here because the higher I got it, the little bit better it felt. And I was saying, Jesus, 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 my dog come running to me. is jumping all over my leg. What's wrong? What's wrong? What do I need to do? What? And he's, he didn't have a clue what to do. But I was already doing it. I was asking God for help through his son, Jesus Christ. And I've had been around people on the, in the, uh, millwright work that I did for many years and, and I've, I've heard their words when they would miss with a hammer or something and hit a finger or something and, and I've heard the curse words and, and I said, did that make it feel better? And they said, no, it didn't. I said, well, you ought to ask Jesus to help you with it. Get an opportunity to share some words. I'm saying to you today, Jesus loves you. He is the horn of your salvation. They used to fill that horn with oil and they would pour it, and it said that there were some of the great fragrances of oils, and, and they would put them in, and, and they would pour it on someone. Today, if you did that, they'd probably sue you for messing up their hair and, and staining their clothing. But I'm telling you what, if it's, the, if it's the anointing of God through something that you're asking Him for, let the stains be that of a, of a testimony of what God is doing. Let those things be a remembrance and not, a, not an arrogant. I t I've said it before that there's people won't come down to get prayed for. They said, if I go down there and, and I'm, I'm on disability and, and, and I know I'm doing really good and God's helping me, but if I go down there and He completely heals me, then i got to go tell them that I don't qualify for disability anymore so I can't go down there like don't pray for me I've got I, I've got disability coming in I had a couple tell me years ago and I'll get ready to finish thank you for your patience today man came to me and I've shared this story before it was an elderly couple and they were just as they were in church regular worked hard and I thought they were a couple. He came to me and he says, we're living together. We're not a husband and wife according to marriage and the law and what the scripture says. He says, but if we get married, she'll lose her husband's pension. He was in the military. He died. And she draws that. But if we get married, we'll lose that. I said, who's your Jehovah Jireh? Who's your provider? Who are you living for? The world says it's okay, but a lot of people are doing it. Many are going that direction and using those thoughts. What should I do? I said, what is the Spirit saying to you through the Holy Spirit? That earpiece that you have in your ear, what's it saying to you? I said, you probably wouldn't be here if you were comfortable with your present decision. I said, so let me say this. Do what God's Spirit says to you. Let Him be the director of your life. Don't do it because I said that it was the right thing or I showed you in Scripture. Do it because God convicted you over it and you did it. And I said, but every time you do good, it's going to cost you. And I prayed with him and I said, Lord, that that they would lose, should they decide to get married, let their life be a testimony of your word, following your word and not my advice, 
But let the testimony of their heart and the meditation of that heart, let it be acceptable in your sight as they make their way, work out their salvation with fear and trembling. You put within them, and Lord, should they lose anything because of not following the traditions of the world, should they lose anything, repay it, Lord, to them through another avenue. They got married. It was over a year after that. He said, my wife retired from Sears. And at the time, it was many years ago this happened. He said she retired from Sears. And she bought stock in Sears. And the stock has just exploded. We're, we're making more now with the stock investment and the increase of it than we lost in what she had. He said, God answered your prayer. And I'm like, well, what prayer was that? I, I prayed so many for so many other different people. It reminded me of it. I asked God believing and I was done with it. I didn't every day get up and say, Lord, don't let me be a foolish person in the presence of my friends. The angel said it was going to be a, a, a son and I've told all of my family and friends it was going to be a son. And here it is. And if it's a girl, Lord, I'm going to be in trouble with everybody. And so in our lives, you can dwell on those things and, and think about your own humility in those times of walking for, in the presence of Christ. Or you can be caught up in the tradition of the world and say, well, I think God will let me get by with this. Whatever this is, I encourage you to ask Him. Don't ask your pastor. Don't ask your well, mate, your friends and neighbors. Ask the Holy Spirit and follow His direction. It says His Spirit would lead us into all truth. The prayer in Psalms 92, you don't have to go look at any of these, contains both the references to oil and a, and a uh, figurative use of the horn. You have exalted my horn, it says in that passage, like that of the wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. <laughs> poured on your church, Lord. Let us be stained with the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 2, 1. Hannah prays. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high, indicating the strength that will come from her having a child. We know that Samuel was dedicated to the Lord. In Luke 1 and 69, I shared with you, Zechariah Zachari praises God, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. In this, the horn, in this case, the horn of salvation is a reference to Jesus Christ. He's your horn of salvation. Thank you, precious Lord. The powerful deliverer, and the king was, who was soon to be born. In Leviticus 8, 15, verse 4, uh, chapter 4, uh, and actually it's uh, 8, 15, and 4, and 6. It says, the horns of the altar speak of the power of God's salvation. Hallelujah. I've heard preachers say, get a hold of the horns of the altar and hang on and let God be the director of all you are. The part of the altar also became the place of refuge and sanctuary for a fugitive in 1 Kings 1, verse 50. And in Psalms 18, 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of salvation. There's many scriptures. I'm just touching the, the, just a part of this iceberg. There's a, you might want to do that study about the horn of, of, that's uh, scattered throughout and spoken of in Scripture. In the New Testament, Jesus is the horn of salvation in Luke 1, 68 and 69. I've shared some of this with you. Thus, titled applied to Yahweh is also applied to Jesus. They are both called the horn of salvation. The very name Jesus the Lord of salvation. We 
We used to sing a song years ago, He was the glory and the lifter of my head. <laughs> Today I ask you to lift up your heads to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords. Get in touch with Him. Let Him speak to you in those times. And then when He says something to you that you would be able to tell Mary and all your friends and all your neighbors, it's going to be a boy. Well, how do you know that? There's no electronics back then. How did they know that? She was boasting and, and saying, even, even Mary, Mary had a promise. You're going to bear a son. But I know no man. Not a problem. The Holy Father in heaven is going to be the father of your child. And you're going to bear a son. And don't worry about it. We're going to tell Joseph and the angel's going to go to him. And I think about that situation Most people today, rather than trust the words of someone, I read years ago something that I shared, and I went through a whole list of different ones that were great people in history. But because of uh, the deficiencies, and they said, you have gone through this and this fever and that condition, and your child is probably not going to live very long. They're going to be deformed if they are born and on and on. And I read so many different stories about how those, and, it's, and it says in that case, then a normal today that they would be aborted. They would be aborted because of the advice. If you think about Jesus in that situation and not wanting to make public spectacle of her, Joseph took her and put her into a private setting that she would have that, that she wouldn't be ridiculed by the public. But Jesus would have been aborted today because it didn't make sense. They say, well, my, my situation, you just don't understand. I'm saying your God understands your situation. And in today's writings and in today's encouragement, in today's advice, through the professionals, that you should abort that child. I'm saying to you that that child, like each of you, has life. If there's a heartbeat, that should be the beginning of life. And the end of that heartbeat should be the ending of this life. Not life completely, but in this life of the flesh. Because your spirit's going to live somewhere eternally. Stand with me this morning. Have you made arrangements as to where your heart, your soul is centered now? And will it carry you in that highway through the desert that's being... Are you? What does your roadway look like as I read scripture to you? What does your roadway look like? I'm seeing that the city of Tampa is trying to raise some more taxes so they can pay for the potholes they're already getting money for that they're not using. I don't understand all of it, but I say to you that what does your roadway look like that leads others to salvation? Is it one that's of patience and love and tenderness and mercy, compassionate, long-suffering, fruit to the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, gentleness, self-control, what does your roadway look like? You might want to get closer to Jesus so that you can improve the roadway. And there's only one way to do it. It's communing with Him and saying, Lord, I don't know what to say to this person right now. And you know me, I'm a little bit timid. I don't really want to, uh, I, I'm just not cut out to be this kind of person. But Lord, they need help. Lord, let me help them. Say something to me that I could say to them that would bring them out of this need right now within their life. What does your roadway look like? We have visitors today. God bless you. Did somebody get them a card this morning? Uh, uh, get a card for our visitors. and, and uh, could feel, Thank you for being here. I want to make mention that we appreciate our visitors. I'm sorry. Oh, you anytime. Uh, we, we, just if we can help you in any way, fill out one of the cards, put a note on there and some information. I'll contact you if you need me to, and, uh, and we'll minister with you. We're so thankful that you chose to be here. There's lots of good churches. There really are. Uh, we're just one of them is all.
I think that we have a great church, great people, loving people. They want to care for others, and, and I believe that we're going to grow. I believe there's some things that are going to take place and start happening that, that is going to astound all of us. God gave us a plan and a vision for this. And Sometimes when I say it, I, I'm like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I didn't hear the Lord right. Maybe when I said that we needed the whole 10 acres, that there was going to be another sanctuary. And This is, this is actually the youth building. That's what I saw and, and what God gave me. They're going to need a building this side just, just, just for the youth. I don't understand how all of that. Will all of it be in my time and my, uh, during my life? I don't know, but I know what God said. And we, we thank you, and we're going to grow, and we're going to reach others. And I encourage you today to work on your roadway that would lead others to Christ. What does your roadway look like? Pray with me this morning. And if you're filling out a card, just God bless you there. Just uh, take your time and sit down if you need to. I don't, I don't want to uh, uh, make it inconvenient, but thank you, all of you, for being here today. Make our visitors feel welcome if you have the opportunity today. George, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you being here. I know that your circumstance, you need to kind of get going. Your precious mom, that's precious to come and support your son. God bless you richly. God bless you. I'm going to do a closing prayer now. And those of you that need something, if you would come forward today after I pray this prayer and let the Lord minister. Father, we thank you today for all those that are here, all those that are listening, as far off as this message may be, and somebody might click on it years from now, but Lord, I pray that this message would go into the heart of those, that they would prepare the roadway, that they would know that there's a horn of salvation, and within it is all the strength and the power and the anointing oil and all the things that it was used for, that horn of salvation, Lord, and, and all of that was put in place when you, you said, Lord, let this cup pass from me, and, and it was all nailed to the cross, and, and you bore all of our sorrows, all of our sins, we say thank you, Lord. I pray that we could actually understand all that you've done for us. That we might bring glory to you and, and, and bring blessings to those around us. I thank you, Lord, for every one of these people that are hearing and are here today. We ask that you would use us, Lord, even though we're not great spokesmen or we may be like Moses and we might try to give, uh, give you the impression that you can't do it. But God, let them know. Let them know that you're going to be there with them and never leave them, never forsake them and give them the strength and the wisdom and the words in Jesus' name. Thank you now for all that you're doing here within Friends and Family Church and all of our community churches around us. Thank you for the, the blessing they are and we ask that you use them and help your people, Lord, to grow and become close to you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep your heads bowed for a moment if you would. If there's one that says, I need, I need prayer today. I need work on my roadway, and I need a little bit of help. Hallelujah. This Johnny is here. If you want to come and ask the Lord, you don't need to ask me. Christ is your intercessor. He's, the, he's, the, uh, uh, the, he's making intercession for you and for I. Each of us, just because we're pastors, doesn't mean that we, we can have to relay something. You can call on the Lord yourself. Does he call on the Lord while he may be found? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the good people that we have here. I thank you for all those that helped me this uh, past Friday, Lord, and uh, cleaning up the church property. I thank you for answering prayers for, for Debbie and for Rick and that entire family, Lord. I thank you that you've answered prayer and comforted them. And, and this time of loss is not going to pass quickly. There was a great loss there, Lord, of a great soul. And, and Lord, you know, the, you know the future of, of all of that family, and we lift them up to you. Thank you, Lord, that you would use all things to, to bring others into the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, how you strengthened and helped each of us, those that are in need, Lord, uh, that are feeling lonely or despondent, those that have health issues, Lord, and just as my sister-in-law, uh, Doris, I, I lift her up, Lord. Her oxygen level was at 58 yesterday, and then it went to 66, and she went into the hospital, and they've got it back up to 98, but she can't maintain that at home, and they don't know what they're going to do. I ask for answers, Lord, but more than just an answer, I thank you for the miracle that you're going to do that's going to give you all the glory. Hallelujah. 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 The miracle that you're going to do. 
and we will praise you from one side of this town and everywhere we go about that that you did as you fill up those lungs with the power of the Holy Spirit and wipe all the scar tissue away and that she would be able to, you know, to just shake that loose and, and get rid of that, that she would be set free like a newborn baby, Lord, and those lungs would be refreshed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for that victory, Lord, for, for Doris. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here within our congregation and our people. We ask that you draw us near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where we can always find you. We thank you that you would draw us near. Help us to be hungry for the word. Help us to learn, Lord, to hear the word and be appreciative of all that you've done. In Jesus' name, I pray as we close this service. Everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you today. Thank you. And we have uh, Denise back with us today. Too.